Whether you loved it or you hated it, the Swatch Omega Moon Swatch was easily the most talked about release of 2022. Upon its release, I argued the Moon Swatch was a stroke of marketing genius on the behalf of the Swatch Group. And while I stand by that premise generally, in this video, I'm going to reflect a little bit more about that take, reflect on what has actually happened since, and then briefly overview two examples that we have here that we can also talk about in more detail. But before we jump into this video, if you want a great holiday gift, I know we're now dealing towards the end of the holiday season, so you might miss the, say, Christmas morning or being ahead on your gifts, but if you're behind, you wanna give someone a nice gift, I'd recommend teddyballister.com gift cards. Great way to give the hunt of finding a watch for somebody else. We have a variety of different dollar amounts available depending on the price that you're looking for. A great last minute gift for the holiday season. Check them out, links will be in the description down below. So earlier this year, I did have some thoughts about this release. I even called it a stroke of genius by the Swatch Group. And in many ways, I still stand by that. I believe it was a great way to not only strengthen the demand immediately for the group in sales, but also helping to make Omega front and center for younger consumers who currently could not afford them. The ability for the Swatch Group to do this was unique also given their structure of offering attainable products all the way up to high horology brands like Breguet, a very different concept than the typical structure of luxury conglomerates such as LVMH or Richemont. This appeared to have worked really well, especially when you would look at the fervor created as people ran to swatch stores to get products waiting in lines for hours. But more meaningfully, this release ignited a large jump in search traffic and digital traffic for not only swatch, but for the Omega Speedmaster. In fact, based on Google trend data, which allows you to look back to any search term activity back to the year 2004, it shows that March 2022 created the highest Google search traffic for both Swatch and the Omega Speedmaster ever in this period, which was pretty remarkable. And even furthering this was the fact that it was more than double any other month throughout this period in terms of total search traffic. But with the Omega Swatch affiliation, there were some out there that thought this watch is gonna be closer to that of a Speedmaster than a Swatch. And for those, they were going to be sadly underwhelmed. On display here, we do have two examples because I do wanna talk about these watches in more detail as well as just kind of recapping in addition to that, kind of what has maybe transpired in regards to maybe some of the disappointment around these watches. Now, specifically, we have the Earth and the Jupiter editions. So for these moon swatches, they offer dimensions closely based on the real Speedmaster with a 42 millimeter diameter, 13.1 millimeter thickness, and a lug to lug of 47.2 two millimeters. On the wrist, the watch wears smaller, though the brighter colored cases like the Earth do add a bit to the visual presence. The cases are composed of matte finish bioceramic, which Swatch is going to call, quote, a hybrid composition of ceramic and biosource material that is sourced from castor plant oil. Without going too deeply into this, the material looks and feels like plastic, which is also to say it's very light, a perception that can and does make the watch feel inexpensive in this instance. We also did see that this material has an issue of shedding its coloration on the skin, specifically for that blue Neptune version. The fixed bezel is color coordinated to complement each case and is complete with a tachometer insert. Set between 20 millimeter lugs, we have a Velcro strap that is frankly not good and is difficult to wear comfortably. At three, we have a push-pull crown and pushers reflecting the Speedmaster format with the watch being topped off with the acrylic crystal with its own tiny S at the center as a nod to the Speedmaster's tiny Omega logo. With the full case package coming with a water resistance rating, of 30 meters. Gazing into the dial, we have a subtly adapted take on the Speedmaster's iconic design with sub registers at two, six, and 10 o'clock and simple linear markings indicating the hours. The hour indices and baton style hands are at least theoretically containing luminescent material, but do not glow with impressive effect and fade quickly after receiving their initial charge. Turning the watch over, we have a simply adorned case back offering some basic information as well as a cleverly designed battery hatch aimed to look like each of the celestial bodies inspiring this model family. Within the case back, ticking loudly away underneath, we have a mass-produced Swiss Quartz Caliber from Etta, which of course is another Swatch Group brand. And that's pretty much it. The Moon Swatch in hand, on the wrist, and in operation, feels of its price range. And I think ultimately why you go for these watches is the cool tie-in. And for that, if you have the right expectations, it does what it needs to do. But now let's talk about the real meat of this subject, which is what was promised, what happened, and where do we go from here with these pieces? 
So I have often argued that expectations are the key to happiness in not only watch collecting, but probably in life in general. And I think this is a big reason why the Moon Swatch has been a polarizing fixture within the watch industry as of late, as there was a vast delta between that what was promised and how the Moon Swatch ultimately did, or in this case, didn't make its way onto the hands of consumers around the world. Upon its release, Swatch offered three important pieces of information that would come to later serve as pain points. For one, the Moon Swatch was described in press materials as non-limited, a standard part of their collection going forward. And despite initially being slated for boutique only sales, the Swatch website prominently ensured that the collection of 11 colorful watches would be available online after some time. And finally, they also indicated that there would be a limit of two watches per individual in order to keep up with the demand. Then on the 26th of March and even days before, people were lining up outside of Swatch boutiques around the world. Viral posts on social media indicated the sheer volume of people waiting at stores quickly spun out of control, with videos showing people crashing under boutique gates, risking life and limb for a sub $300 watch. Adding insult to injury, the actual quantity of Moon Swatches supplied to each boutique seemed to have been critically low, meaning many of the people who waited came up empty, which would be especially disappointing after sleeping outside of your local shopping mall. Given the hype and the relatively limited supply, flippers tried asking for absurd prices, especially when you again consider this watch itself is still a relatively inexpensive plastic swatch that is far from an actual Speedmaster. Further, the subsequent press material indicated Moon Swatches would not become available online, and supply of what was essentially the most in-demand watch in the world seemed to be only trickling out. Even now, coming close to a year after the release, the watches are still rarely found in boutiques, killing the hype in the process, and now the limit is down to one watch per individual rather than two. As the watch industry often proves, some challenges in availability can be a good thing perception-wise, but certainly not when you're talking about the scale of the Moon Swatch, when one of the main reasons for its initial brilliance was its ability to begin many in their watch collecting journey, to maybe one day be the way in which somebody might navigate to own a Speedmaster. But if the product that emulates the real thing ends up being just as hard or harder to get than the real thing, you have to be questioning what really was the point. But now the question comes up, where do you go from here? Now, Swatch has begun to roll out different programs, such as their plan to have the Moon Swatch Road Tour, where they will be going to different markets with branded fiats that don't have a Swatch retailer to give more of an opportunity to different buyers out there. But in my humble opinion, I'm not sure this will remedy or re-harness the hype we initially saw with this product. If there's going to be another jump in hype around these, the clear answer is going to be increasing production and making them more widely available. And I think they have to strongly consider an online strategy that is at least close to what was originally promised. But perhaps the hype around these pieces even surprised Swatch so much that they are worried that if they do meet the demand, that it might flood the market too much and devalue what they have created and have a negative impact on Omega. This was a big point of contention for a lot of people out there when this was first done, so maybe this is a way for them to navigate this. And I think at this point, there are many that have just given up on this watch. Do I still think they're personally cool? Absolutely. Do I think I would probably own one? I think so as well. But am I gonna wait in line? No. And do I think that maybe it wasn't fully harnessed to its fullest capacity? Yes, I think so. But what do you guys think about the Moon Swatch now? Are you completely over this release? Are you sick of them? Do you think there's still something to uh, re-harness in terms of the popularity? We saw that jump with the Google Trends data earlier in the video. Do you think there's any hope for the Swatch group to allow them to see some more excitement around these pieces? And if they can, how can they do it? Let us see comments down below. But guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. That really does help out the channel. Really would appreciate that as well. Definitely check out those gift cards on teddybaldister.com. And if you don't want to you know, give a gift to somebody else and want to treat yourself or something, check out the different brands that we have for sale. Over 30 different brands that we're an authorized dealer of, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. How we're able to create this content is through the store. We don't take money from the brands to create the content we have on this channel. So really the store is how this is all made possible and helping to foster up a new generation of watch enthusiasts. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.